topple the wall. I mean, does have the ability to peel for Thor. Do you expect a lot of aggression out of there, or do you also expect that to be a safer lane? That's probably going to wind up being a more aggressive lane, um, mostly because he may be very squishy, but he can put out a lot of easy burst. It's going to be heavily dependent on what they're up against, though. Um, I believe they should be up against the the Arachne Sobek lane. So if they can get onto Arachne and if they can keep Arachne CC'd, they should have a very uh, easy time getting the, the Thor fed. On the flip side, Thor is very squishy himself, and with that lane, if he gets uh, caught without a, an escape or caught without a stun, he could be in trouble. Because there is a lot of early damage to be had there between Arachne and Sobek. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, just real quick, I'm going to change gears as uh, we're getting a few more viewers in here. Again, guys, this is BLGNA versus uh, RG, and I forgot to add the team names here, so I'm going to do that real quick. And my mouse is now bugging out, so bear with me once I get my mouse working again. But um, we're going to have KO on Thor, Arena Take on Agni, Wig Beaner playing the Volmana Sturmis on Ymir and Anister on Ra. Uh, do you mind taking the, the other group for me? Yep. And on RG, we have EMC playing Bacchus, Wolfie playing Arachne, uh, RG Roxic, is that how I'm supposed to say this? AKA Kevin Bacon on uh, Al Kwong, Kiedrill uh, on Sobek, and Hero on Anher. So, this is <coughs> a very new BLGNA team, and this is a very new RG team. Uh, this is going to be the first, at least that we know of, scrim for this RG lineup. It's, this is, I think, the no, it's not, um, the second full scrim for the new BLGNA team. The, the the second scrim with their full lineup. So both teams relatively new. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how this pans out. In the start here, pretty typical, pretty safe. We did see a... Um, an invade earlier on Saturday, but uh, we didn't see one here. I thought possibly they might do it with uh, this lineup, but I guess with Arachne you can get those easy creep buffs and not really yeah. have to worry about it, so if, it's if probably you actually smart. Look at that Arachne and Sobek lane, they actually, because Arachne, it's so easy for Arachne to do, they took both buffs, both uh, heavy buffs, so they, got the they're CDR really and the right speed. ahead as far as experience goes. Yeah, I'm I'm actually kind of surprised a little bit. They probably did that to take the double buffs, but I feel like Arachne can, you know, really use that blue buff effectively. Uh, at least it just lets her get a lot of eggs on the field. It makes it very hard to push. See, Arachne really doesn't need that mana. It's 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 a very common misconception that she's gonna need that to to stay aggressive in the lane. And really, the eggs don't do that much for you at the end of the day. We saw a little bit of aggression here coming out from Sobek and Arachne, and really not too much coming with it. The stun and then freeze follow-up really put a little bit of a damper on that as Arachne takes quite a bit of damage. And uh, no real follow-up, though, from counter-follow-up from that. It ended up just kind of, you know, petering out, and they're feeling each other out right now. Uh, mid lane, we have looks like a, a pretty good battle going between um, uh, Agni and Ao, and those tornadoes should hit. Yeah, so Arena's going to take a little bit more damage there. And so, um, who do you expect to win this middle lane? Right now, it does seem pretty even. Ao is sitting at 2100, and Agni is sitting at uh, 2200. It's uh, really, really close, actually. It's kind of jumping back and forth right now because it's such a small amount. But who do you really see taking off here as Agni is low mana and lower health? I don't really expect the clear-cut victor from this lane. Um, I think... I don't really ex uh, After level 5, this is really going to slow down. Uh, Alquan's going to be very scared of aggression from Agni. Um, you know, and Agni's not going to be able to, to put on too much pressure and deal with the minions at the same time. The only real circumstance I would see a winner coming from that lane is maybe some heavy ganking, but considering how, how much pressure I think both of these lanes are going to be put on, um, both of the side lanes, for one reason or another, I don't expect to see too much movement early on either. Yeah, both lanes are pushed up pretty far. Um, they, they're kind of going back and forth, at least uh, on the side of this Ymir, the Mir Thor lane. Ymir Thor lane, they've gone back and forth a little bit, but Ra and Vomana have kept it pushed up really, really far. Obviously, Vomana and Ra are an insane push team. 
So I'm sure they're going to keep it on the tower pretty much the whole time and try to deny as much gold as possible on that on her. Uh, but other than that, I, I think this is going to be our surprise lane, is this Thor, Ymir, Sobek, Arachne. I don't really know how a team fight is going to come out, but uh, there's a lot of potential, I think, on both ends to really turn a team fight around, or a lane fight, rather. Yeah, I think... Uh, this lane has the most potential for Ooh, there's a hook actually and a flip. Thor is very deep in there. He's going to ult now. The freeze, the slow coming. Thor will be dropping down momentarily and he actually just drops all the way back. Ymir using his ult. A bit of miscommunication there from Sturmis and Thor. Sturmis now trying to go. There's the stun. The hammer getting the double hit and no one's going to go down. And so, oh, a little bit of miscommunication. If I he could have stunned Arachne or somebody in that ult, that could have been possibly the fight. Yeah, I think if he would have came straight down, he would have put himself in a lot more risk than the same time, there would have been a lot more potential for a reward there. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a miskill opportunity, but at the same time, he would have been in, still in a lot of danger without any escapes left. And I must have missed this, apparently, because uh, when, with the new setup mode, um, or with the delay, it doesn't give you the announcement, so my apologies here. I just realized Thor has a kill, though. So Thor has actually already killed Sobek, so there must have been some aggression over there while we were talking about Ra. Unfortunately, the uh, I would think about going back. I just don't know how far it is back, so I don't know if that would yeah, screw things up. Yeah, and then it would screw up the particles anyway. Yep, so <laughs> my apologies, guys. We did miss first blood. It did go in the favor of Thor. Thor picking up beads, and uh, obviously... He's trying to counter a little bit of the CC from Sobek, but I think it's even more so Arachne, right? Because he'll be able to cast. If Arachne does the um, jumps on his face, he, if he uses it, he can still use his spells yeah. then, right? So it essentially yeah. unsilences him. And I think that's what he's looking for. That way he can hammer out. That way he can still stun. Uh, it'll really allow him to go you know, away. Because it's not for the slow. His spin will get him out of the slow. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how that ends up working for him. Sobek hitting level 6, um, well, I think we'll see some aggression here soon. Ymir is picking up this, uh, the blue buff with Thor. Thor did pick it up. So he's going to start getting those stacks on his uh, Heartseeker. And so Thor's damage will really start going through the roof here in this laning phase. He starts to get stacks oh, so again. Gangs. I'm sorry? Uh, I thought I saw some uh, ganks getting set up for mid, but it seems like uh, MC decided to back off. Yeah, I think um, I, I saw Bacchus come over in Arachne, and yeah, they, they kind of juked me out there too for a second. And those of you who are watching, if you don't know, Scytheman is actually on a bit of a delay. He's casting from the stream. He is not casting from spectators. So we have a, a few seconds delay between what he's seeing and what I see. So we're trying to coordinate this as, as best we can. But uh, until we can hopefully get him some spectator abilities... We will, uh, you know, give give it our best shot, and this is what we got. So, uh, if we have any miscommunication, or if we have any, uh, you know, like weird, uh, it, it ever happens that you know I, I try to pick up on the action, and oh, Ragni with the pull, and nothing comes of it. <laughs> no, but Thor comes in, does get the stun, the hammer coming out, gets a double hit. She's gonna sprint away though, not able to get her, and now Ao Kuang is in a bit of trouble. The stun going on him. Ymir all gets the final blow. And they are going to be able to pick off Ale. Almost ended up picking up Wolfie on Arachne. She got down to almost nothing. So great communication, good rotation over there by Ymir and Thor. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, what's interesting about that is that both Silence had roamed over to, to uh, pretty much try to get the red buffs for their mid. And uh, I, I would have assumed everybody knew that everybody was there, but the engagement happened anyway. And, uh, the BLJ and A team had just had one extra person there making all the difference, and a, actually a much harder CC lineup to deal with that. And so Aragni almost going down, pretty, just very lucky with the numbers. A few more stacks on KO, and Aragni would have been dead. But um, overall, a good engagement for BLG. Kind of try and stretch a, you know, start a lead now, about a K up. Yeah, it's not just bad. A little bit over a K. Yeah, it's. I mean, right now that's. I mean, it's like, hey, we have an advantage, but at the same time, it's like, it's only a 1,000, it's pretty early, things could change. But you still got to be happy anytime you're getting any type of uh, distance between a team. Because you'd expect through the majority of this, they're going to stay pretty tight. These are both very top-tier teams. And so I think you take what you can get and just slowly try to grow it, you know? Yeah, definitely. I'm just looking at uh, 
Looking at the ward coverage for both teams, I'm assuming all of that on the left side of the map as far as the uh, red team goes is eggs, a little bit of aggression mid or anything. Ooh, the right. ultimate does hit, tornadoes come out, he's probably Ooh. going down, he is, oh, so oh, great yeah. kill. Awesome job there by, yeah, what is it, RXK, is that his name? I don't yeah, know how to say it. It's supposed to be Roxic, is, is what, how he wants it pronounced. Roxic, okay, that is news to me, but we will try to give it to you, Roxic. I don't know, let's call him Kevin Bacon, because he's Kevin Bacon in my heart. Oh, is that who it is? That's Kevin Bacon? I didn't realize that. Yeah, that's Kevin Bacon. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I've seen him quite a bit there in uh, ranked, ranked cube before. So, oh, we might have some aggression here. Ra is pushing up a little bit. Will he start the slow? I thought for sure he was going to, but Bacchus and Onher aren't going to jump on that either. And so, still very little aggression on this side, but it is going to, you know, the tower is going to be continually pushed on. So, a lot of gold loss on for this Onher and, and Bacchus. But um, it, we'll see how it goes. Eventually, this Bacchus should start roaming. On her, will pick up. Oh, looks like we might have a gank setting up in the woods, though. Ron Vomana coming out. That's Anister and Wigbeaner. One word coming out. Oh, they're not going to go on this Bacchus. I thought for sure they were going to. They're just going to fall back. Maybe go on this. On her, on her. Overextend a little bit. The p the uh, stun coming out. There's the knockup. No ultimate coming out from either player, though. Ra's going to use his heal, and both players are going to be okay. So. No real aggression coming after that little, you know, a couple spells coming out here and there. And uh, something to point out is that Wolfie has actually gone almost to a full jungle phase now. I don't think he's actually left the uh, jungle and he's been staying there. So I don't know how that'll pan out. And he's actually going to come over and help out this team fight here as Vomana and Ra are coming in here. Trying to corner this Bacchus. Bacchus able to leap out. There's the hook though. Thor coming in. Does get the stun. The second stun. Spin to win. Gets the kill. Bacchus trying to ult try to save Arachne. But Arachne has already been taken out. The, p the stun not able to hit there. Here's the slow coming from Ra. The stun from Bacchus doesn't hit. He's not drunk enough. Vomana with the ultimate. The heal from Ra. The beam getting a double hit. Chunking down Bacchus. Bacchus might get away. The hammer just misses. There's the two. And he is going to get the kill on her now alting able to juke it with the sprint the final auto attack does get the kill so on her now getting his first kill trying to get the one onto thor and he's gonna fall back now as Ra also escapes so i would still say though that would be in the favor of blgna however yeah. on her might still be chasing this out Ra though wants to dance it out with him jukes the stun a couple auto attacks being exchanged the heal coming out on her gonna leap away and no more aggression coming out of there in that yeah, whole time, Sturmis has been solo against a Sobek. <laughs> yeah, the, that tank lying on the left side is uh, meh. But that that fight definitely in favor of me. And uh, Ragni losing stacks again. Oh no, just the, that's the first time she's lost stacks. So now she's definitely going to have to dip in lane, whether she was, you know, sitting in the jungle just trying to set up ganks, which is I, I assume what Muffy was doing. You know, Ragni's known for having a very strong early game, a very strong uh, ganking potential, but. You know, not so strong going in mid late game. So when you pick her up, you really want to pressure the advantage as soon as you can. But uh, getting that kill on her, which is pretty much 100% attributed to Thor's presence there, um, you know, really slows that down for her, especially since she was depending on those heart seeker stacks for her damage output. How do you feel about the pickup of Celerity Boots on Arachnia? I would have assumed she would have went reinforced, especially since her weakness is that hard CC. You might as well cut him down as much as you can. Oh, actually, we might have a battle. We'll come back to that. Oh, no, Ra's just going to fall back. He came in there, and on her was low. Now Bach is pressuring as Arachne comes in the jungle. There's the knock of the stun coming out. Does it hit? Yes, it does hit Ra. The hook just misses there. The on her ultimate coming out, not doing enough damage. The beam getting a double hit on her, now having to fall back. There's the snipe. Ra gets the kill onto on her and that is going to be a reset on those stacks. So now both stacked AD carries have lost it. Thor actually ults in. There's the stun. The hammer coming out. Spin to win. Will Vamana be able to get there in time? There's the umbrella ring. The auto attacks does get the kill and Arachne's going to have to fall back as it is a 2 for 0 exchange. Great play there by BLGNA. And that's what I meant about that lane having a lot of turnaround potential. That was a three-man gank and even if the hook hadn't have, uh, had landed there, I doubt we would have seen a very different outcome there. I just think Amano would have ulted sooner and, you know, had a lot more AoE damage on a clumped up team there. Um, as far as the celerity boost and the Arachne go, I think it's because Wolfie really is trying to play this heavy roaming uh, role, you know, going oh, from yeah. lane to lane, clearing the jungle as fast as he can, and then showing up across the map. 
And that actually makes a lot of sense. If you are going for a jungle gank role, I didn't even think about it like that. That that does make a lot of sense. Because, you know, his thought process is I come in, gank, kill, I leave. It's not like I'm sitting in there duking it out with, you know, other players. Oh, actually, though, Ra going to be in a little bit of a difficult situation. Maybe the slow coming out. Bach is trying to leap in the stun. Might be coming out. Does it hit? It does hit. Arachne gets the hook. Gets a couple of auto attacks. Should be jumping on any second. Does the heal, though, comes out first. Able to survive quite a bit through the, the ultimate from Ao. The stun from Thor. The Ra being the ultimate coming out. Who's going to go down? Ao's killed. Bach is getting taken down very low. Ymir ult coming out. Sobek now comes in here. The Agni ultimates. The slow from Ymir. Sobek trying to get away. There's the path. The wall not in time. and is not going to protect him. That is three players down only for Ra being played by Anister and Anister playing a support role. You have to be happy with that exchange. Definitely. I mean, what started with him just getting caught out of position ends in them blowing in way too many cooldowns on him as a ring tank. No, I'm not going to get caught there. Uh, you know, you want to get the kill. Yes, he's out of position, but at the same time, to waste as many cooldowns as they did and then they get turned around on for it is a very, very big mistake. Well, and, you know, they lose three kills and a gold fury for it. It's, it just wasn't worth it. How much of a difference did this make? We, we were talking about this a while ago, and I, t I think there's a lot of players who really underestimate this, though. Is If you notice, um, he the hook came out from Arachne, pulled him in, uh, him being Anser on Raw. He put in a couple auto attacks, which I think is fine, but waited to face hug. And because of that, Ra was able to drop his heal and sit in it. And t personally, I feel like that made a huge difference in his ability to live and his ability to allow his team to come in there. Uh, what do you think about that? I'm going to say it definitely bought him a second or two, but I think at the end of the day, he, Ra is just so in such a right now. Just the fact that you can really just build him tanky and still have all the effectiveness that because he has all this early built up resistances it's they just weren't able to drop him as fast as they would have liked and that's what forced out all the cooldowns and forced out you know it's just he it bought him time for the rest of his team to show up and clean up essentially absolutely yeah that makes a lot of sense because uh, one thing that people I think don't consider too is uh, whether it be a tank, whether whoever it is, is uh, something that we've talked quite a bit about is the fact that cool, like how important it is for cooldowns, especially as an AD carry who has stacks. You know, it's like okay, what cooldowns have come out because that's where a lot of the damage is going to come from. But where to me, like a lot of that important piece comes from is the fact that uh, that allowed Thor to come in and he didn't have to worry about a lot of damage coming out. You know, he could come in, he played his stun, able to use his hammer, and didn't have to think, man, am I going to need my hammer to try and escape? He just said, look, I'm going to DPS, I'm going to DPS hard, and was able to pick up a couple kills for that. So, uh, something that people don't often associate with MOBAs, though, is cooldown management. Yeah, I think the, the major problem with cooldown management is we see them going on to EMC here, diving a tower, maybe two. They yeah, no, he's out. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you, Bacchus. But um, I think a, a lot of people, what a basic step when you're just learning a MOBA should be is learning how to manage cooldowns, learning how to keep track of the other team's cooldowns as far as this, uh, you know, damage that can come out, um, damage that you can put out, and not buying things such as cooldown reduction or, you know, uh, MP5 to help you spam cooldowns. It's not about spamming. It's about picking the right moments to use them. You know, obviously both these teams know how to do that as we see more aggression coming out mid, dragon missing and dragon dying. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I wasn't going to interrupt you there because it was a, a pretty straightforward fight, nothing too crazy. Yeah. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, the cooldown reduction I is a big part of this and it's something that goes overlooked on her though is going to be running out. The two just missed! Oh my goodness, I thought for sure Vamana had that kill. That might have actually hit. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, oh, I look, you know what, Agni came in and ended up getting it anyways. I didn't see him come in there. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. Ends up picking up on her. The ultimate's coming like out. And he's doing... tier 2 tower from this. That's the other thing about this uh, Rava monolane. If they get neglected or if they're allowed to sit in lane for a long time, there's so much push potential between the two of them. Both of these, probably two of the strongest pushers in the game. And I, I just uh, realized Agni went first item talent. Uh... I'm, I'm not going to question it because he's playing really, really well right now, but I'm kind of surprised to see that as a first item, and then followed up with that Void Stone, so he's got a little bit of penetration and has a ton of damage right now, so um, yeah. I think, you know, for minute 15, having that plus 100 is quite a bit. 
Yeah, I, I actually like this build a lot on Agni. Um, generally, I like Celerity Boots instead of the, the Magi Boots, but I'm not going to knock it because he's been doing a good job with it. This is probably the fourth or fifth time I've seen him go this exact build, and uh, it's worked for him, so you know, can't knock it. But um, the, I think the, the item is, is just so strong on Agni because he doesn't requ uh, require mana on his ult. You know, a, a lot of burst damage you can put out. Right. And even with as tanky as people build, you know, a hundred damage, a hundred plus damage actually, because it, because of the talent on uh, the the passive on talent. Right, depending upon his health. Uh, yeah, yeah, so that's at that full health. He has a hundred plus damage, and most time in mid, you're probably sitting at half flirting, es kind of poking. Especially on Agni, when it, there's a lot of uh, damage seated in your dash as well. But um, I, I just think it's a very strong build on him. I don't think you have to worry about any um. Resistance is too early on because you should be relatively safe as long as you play relatively safe. And then, you know, all these guys that just want to sit and farm mid are in a lot of trouble come mid game because even with as, as safe as, they, as they've been playing, you can just burst them down. And we and might have a team fight. Coming out. Yes, there's the ultimate from Ao Kwong under the gold fear. I think blue team ended up picking me up. So back going to be a little bit out of position. Is finally killed. Ao Kwong dropping those tornadoes. And nobody was able to rotate in time. I double checked while you were talking, and there was actually no vision over there as far as uh, RG having vision. However, Sobek kind of knew something was up. Checked. Uh, unfortunately, but when you face check like that, that. Yeah, pr they probably knew the timer was coming up. I think Sobek was really hoping he could buy time, which he did. But uh, the dragon missed the goal here. He just a uh, good amount of foresight on the part of BLG and A to move it. Oh, a hook uh, by Vamana into the tower. He's going to dash away. The freeze coming out is going to miss. I'm sorry for interrupting you. But the Bacchus ultimate coming out. Uh, the AK tornado is doing a ton. On her coming in from behind the ultimate. Not enough. The stun on, the, on her. On her might go down. He does. The beam coming out from Ra. And now Bacchus is a little bit out of position. The damage coming out. Ra ultimate just missing. He jumps away. And now Thor jumping in. Will he drop his stun and tower dive this? They do take one hit, Ra's going in now deep, going man mode, the slow coming out, he will be dropping the, yes, or the beam coming out, he's on his face, Bach is now helping him, there's the stun from Thor, Aragni taken out, the ultimate from Agni, not going to hit as Bach is leaps away, and that will be another tower going down, ooh, Sobek ultimate has come out, will be pushing in onto this team, has many from the slow, good immunity there from Agni, not going to take the damage as he continues to fall back, Ymir looks like he's teleporting, everybody just going back now, oh, Vamana taken out, looks like Sobek ended up picking him up. So good kill there by Sobek. However, three for one with the tower definitely goes in the favor of BLGNA, and they are up by 10k gold. Yeah, definitely a mistake from Hero there going in from behind. I, you know, you see it occasionally work out, but it really is on any sort of carry. To come in from behind on a team like that is very risky. If they turn around, you're pretty much guaranteed to be dead. Um, Alkong is doing a lot of damage during the duration of that fight. Um, uh, one of the main reasons I think Vamana died there is she just kept walking back into them. Um, really nothing much else to say. Good Aegis by the Agni. EMC getting caught a little bit, you know, not going to really matter. Just going to lose a ward because of it. Yeah, and we see the counter warding already going on. A lot of vision coming out here now from both teams. I'll show it to you real quick. Uh, BLGNA, actually just with the couple... Uh, wards over there by Fire Giant, so obviously they're wanting to set that up as RGs looks like they might be setting up there. They have uh, one one ward over there. It's in their, their red camp currently, and it looks like we are going to have engagement here in Fire Giant most likely. Agni might get caught out here. Sobek is going to flip the hook here from Arachne, and he's getting taken down to half. The tornado's just missing. The face hug coming out. There's the stun from Thor. Not going to be enough as Ao Kwan gets the final hit, and now Thor in a very bad position. The flip from Sobek due to immunity, not going to get flipped. And Arachne now going to also use her B so she can get away. Arachne, though, trapped on the other side of the wall. It sounds like somebody's trying to come in from the back. It's Vamana. He's going to dash out, and that is going to be a 1-0. I think that is the first engagement RG has essentially come on, on top on, and so they might get the opportunity to get Fire Giant here. We'll see how they end up pressuring it on her going back to mid, probably just going to push it a little bit. But I'm actually, I still think that uh, BLGNA can defend this Fire Giant pretty well, and RG is going to start it now. So what do you think? think? Do you, do you fight this BLG's out? I think BLG is missing a lot of damage without that, um, a lot of raw damage without that Agni. I still think with the amount of CC they have and the amount of farm that they have uh, ahead of RG, because they are sitting 10k up right now, um, that they could easily still pressure them off of this, and you see RG just kind of fall back. They, they, they know they can't 
do that uh, with only one person down. Yeah, I think, uh, again, there, there's so much crowd control there that if they were able to get inside the fire giant pit, uh, the AoE from Ra, possibly the Ymir ultimate, uh, possibly the Vomana, it could really have ended up doing some damage on them. And, and maybe maybe they don't you know, have a whole lot of kills, but they definitely could have stopped them from doing fire giant, and I, mean, uh, I think they realized that too. You also have to factor in if any of the tanks get in, Arachne's almost guaranteed dead because she has no escape. On her has no stacks right now, dying in the previous uh, fight. They really don't have anything going for them to be able to 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 have an advantage even four v five in that fight. Yeah, real quick, I want to go over some items as we kind of got our first break in uh, what's going on, or at least in the meta or anything. Uh, we have a Gem of Isolation picked up on Agni, and he started his Rod of Tahiti. We have the Hide of Nemean Lion on Vomana with the Void Blade, so has gotten a bit tanky, also giving himself a little bit more damage output. Um, uh, Ymir has picked up a... Uh, Mystical Mark with a Bulwark. Ra is about to finish his Gem of Isolation, but is going for the most part for a tank build. Oh, actually, Agni might get caught. No, he's going to hit that stun and be able to get out of there, most likely, unless Obek goes for a flip. He's going to sprint and get away. Ooh, that looked like that could have been uh, a pretty close engagement there. Uh, for RG, Bach is going for a similar build for Ymir. He has the Mystical Mark started and the Bulwark. Neither have finished quite yet. Oh, actually, they're going to be starting uh, Gold Fury here. I don't know if there's any... There's no vision over there, but it looks like they're going to be doing Fire Giant. Maybe they do know what's going on, and they're just going to trade that. And look at that. RG responds by, starping, by stopping Gold Fury and is going to go over and try to stop this Fire Giant. So we are going to have a team fight in here. Sobek does drop down with his ultimate. Going to be on most of the team. And Vomana trying to do as much damage to him as he can. Nobody in the Fire Giant pick quite yet. The Tornado's coming out. I believe they got onto Vomana. Vomana going to ult to try to stay alive. Damage going out onto Wigby to playing the Vomana. RG Wolfie has been taken out. EMC also going to take him down very low. He is taking out the ultimate from Ao Kuang. Not going to be able to do enough damage. And now Sobek getting taken down very low. He's going to dash away. And on her now is taking quite a bit of damage. The ultimate from Ymir going to kill him in Sobek. Is he getting chased? It looks like they're trying to corral him a little bit. Vomana is just going to fall back and are they going to be able to catch somebody? They're trying to get Ao Kuang right now. Ao is at full health. He's going to try and sprint away. Will anybody be able to get there in time? The stun won't be able to hit but the Gem of Isolation did. Will the ultimate come out? It's going to drop the Tinos. There's the slow. Ra now slowing. There's the, the heal coming out. The beam getting a double hit. Good stun from Thor. They finally chase him down and that is going to be four for zero in fire Giant is sitting all alone and is quickly going to be joined by five gods ready to take him out. Yeah, uh, that was a very good call, I think, on the part of BLGNA. I don't know really how they had vision of uh, uh, that uh, they uh, were going for a cold period, but to, to maybe they just did it off of instinct, but to go for the fire giant, even if RG would have gotten that gold period, they still would have been in a very, very poor place because the gold they would have gotten off the gold fury would not equate to the fire giant buff and they, you know they had to contest it but at the same time losing four gods like that still losing the buff yeah that's what i expected pretty much gg <laughs> yeah the <laughs> gg does come